name is Dr. Janardhan Rao. Uh, today my topic is the process management. Uh, we will discuss about what is critical section and uh, uh, how to avoid this uh, critical section. So what are the conditions for the critical section? And, uh, we will see all these things. So in the previous uh, slide we discussed about the critical section. The critical section is no two processes uh, should try to enter into the shared area that is maybe memory or uh, CPU and thing. So to avoid this one we write a program and uh, we keep in the OS then OS will uh, streamline these uh, processes which process should enter into the um, shared area and uh, we will see this is a simple program and the critical section problem is to design a protocol that the processes can use the uh, cooperate each processes must request permission to enter its critical section. So as we discussed, um, this is your critical section and these are the processes and uh, we'll, this is our OS. This is our OS. So OS should monitor so which process should enter into the CPU or uh, maybe it may be a common area or a common uh, shared area or a shared memory or anything. So I uh, may be IO. So no two process should be permitted to enter into the CPU. So that is a protocol or process we are writing, we are going to write in this one OS and this OS will monitor and we, we will manipulate only one process which should enter into the microprocessor or any, any shared area. Uh, other uh, process should wait. That's simply it is very strict. No two process should be allowed to enter into the microprocessor or anything. So this is a simple program entry section while uh, lock is not, not equal to zero. So lock is equal to one. Then enter into the critical section, then do the operation in the critical section and uh, exit section. This is the exit section and uh, make the log zero. So this is a um, simple uh, concept of this uh, how to manipulate this uh, critical section. So this is a simple program and this program we will write and we will add it to the microprocessor to the OS and OS will, uh, OS is a program now. So now it will uh, continue this one. So this simple operation of this one, as we have seen. So in this above uh, pseudo code, there are three sections, three parts. You can say three parts in the in this code: entry section, critical section, and exit section. So initially, the value of lock value is zero. The process which needs to get into the critical section enters into uh, inter intersection and uh, checks the condition, then provide in the while loop. The sense it will continue in the while loop. So other process will also check it whether it is uh, free or not. Then log one, they enter into the critical section, and uh, after completion of that, that one that program or uh, operation, then exit, exit section, then again make the log zero. So this is a while loop continue till the program is completed. That uh, the complete uh, program is complete to be completed in this one. So. A solution to the critical section problem must satisfy the following three following these requirements. As you can see, mutual exclusion, progress, bounded, bounded weighting, portability. Out of the four parameters, mutual exclusion and progress must progress must be provided by any solution. Let's see, analyze the mechanism and on the basis of this above mentioned conditions. So you have seen, just look at this diagram. So, requirement for, for synchronization mechanism. Synchronization is, that means, so only one process should enter in the microprocessor after completion of this one. So, another another process will enter into this one. So, soon after this is vacating this micro, uh, critical section, other process should enter. That's what synchronization, synchron, synchronization that is called. Synchronization means only when one process is leaving the critical section, other process will enter. So that's soon after it leaves that one. So mutual exclusion. Just you see, this is a diagram, critical section. This is a critical section. And uh, these are the processes. Just you see example. So we should not allow all the process to enter into the critical section. This is wrong. And this is right. So at a time, one process will enter into the critical, the critical section. And it will, it will uh, execute its, its uh, operation. Then soon after it leaves, then other will enter in this one. This is what uh, 
mutual exclusion between the mutual understanding between the processes. So, if you look at this one, so our um, solution must provide a mutual exclusion. By mutual exclusion, we mean that if one process is executing inside the critical section, the other process must not enter into the critical section. That is what basically. So, what is the progress? Progress means that if one process does not need to execute into, uh, into critical section, then it should not stop other process to get into the critical section. So, unnecessarily uh, no process should enter into the critical section uh, once it is not does not have any work in this critical section. So, that is called uh, we will, it will allow other process to enter into the critical section for the execution. So, that is what uh, progress. Then secondary, bounding, bounded waiting. So, predict the waiting time for every process to get into the critical section. The process must not endlessly waiting for getting into the critical section. So, that is bounded. So, there will be some time limit for the processes to enter into the um, my critical section. You should not wait for a long time. That is a bounded waiting. Architectural natural neutrality. The mechanism must be architectural natural. It means that if the solution is working fine on one architecture, then it should it should also run on the other ones as well. That is what uh, architectural natural naturality. Okay. Then, uh, then we will see the critical section problem. The two general uh, approaches are used to handle critical section in operating system, preemptive kernels and uh, non-preemptive non kernels. As we know, what is preemptive and uh, non-preemptive? Preemptive means uh, forcibly we can uh, stop the operation and uh, um, we will allow, uh, well, uh, allocate that one to uh, another process that is called preemptive. Non-preemptive means once it is uh, running the, um, the um, in the shade area. So, we cannot stop in between, we cannot interrupt that one, that is non preemptive kernels. A preemptive kernel allows process to be preempted while it is running in kernel mode, that is what I am telling. Preemptive means forcefully you can stop, uh, you can interrupt and uh, we allow allocate to some other process that is uh, forcefully, that is called preemptive. So, non preemptive kernel does not allow a process running in kernel, kernel mode to, to be preemptive. A kernel mode process will run until ex exist kernel mode blocks are uh, voluntarily will really control of the CPU. We cannot stop in between once we allocate the CPU to the process. So, till the completion are terminated, the process will not come from the kernel. That is called uh, non preemptive So, we will we got some uh, solutions, suggestions from the experts that Peterson solution. A uh, Peterson solution provides a good algorithmic description of solving the critical section problem and illustrates some of the complexities involved in the designing software that address the requirement of mutual exclusion, progress, and bound waiting, bounded waiting. These are the conditions for the critical section. You can solve this out of these three mutual exclusion, progress, and bounded waiting, then definitely uh, the critical section problem will be solved. So, this is a simple sort of code for the uh, Peterson solution to flag equal to flag i equal to 0, flag i equal to 0, that is true, turn j. So, while flag j and turn equal to j, then enter into critical section, so flag, then make the flag i equal to false, then remainder in critical section by true. So, this is the Peterson solution. So, once the flag is uh, 0 means, it means that uh, critical section is free. Then, okay, then flag I, flag J and turn, turn equal to its sum, turn equal to that process turn, turn equal to J, then enter into critical section. So, and then after that one, um, once the problem is solved in the over, then flag I equal to false, make it false, then come out from the critical section while true, it is uh, uh, infinite loop. So, it keep on going till the program is executed completely. That is what uh, Peterson solution. So, good, this is a good uh, algorithmic uh, description of solving the problem, critical section problem. Two process solution, this is a problem for the solution between the two processes. Assume that the load and uh, store uh, machine language sections are atom atomic, that is cannot be interrupted. So, that is, uh, we cannot uh, stop in between. 
the two processes share two variables in turn in turn boolean flag boolean flag of two the variable turn indicates whose turn it is entering the critical section because there are processes in the queue so that turn indicates which process which process should enter into the critical section that is the turn of the process process so next so the flag array is used to indicate if a process is ready to enter the critical section flag flag i is equal to zero am on true the true that is both are true means then it will enter into the critical section implies process y pi is ready or not so here are two standard variables uh, shared variables uh, into turn for as process who starts to enter the critical section boolean flag i value of true indicates that process wants to enter enter the critical section it is initialized to false indicating no process wants to enter the critical section so that's that is a two uh, variables uh, one is uh, int turn and uh, boolean flag i it allows two or more processes to share a single use uh, resource uh, without conflict uh, using only shared memory for communication so this is a uh, Um, Peterson solution is uh, only for uh, for two processes uh, or more than two processes waiting in the queue. So whenever any process is uh, required, uh, having the requirement for the CPU or uh, uh, shared memory, then that uh, boolean flag will be array will be true. So I want to enter in the critical section. So it is at one day of the critical in this Peterson solution. So Peterson solution is limited to two processes. it involves busy waiting so these are the disadvantages of the peterson solution so advantages of the peterson solution it is able to preserve all three rules for the solution of the critical section so there's minimum three that it assures mutual exclusion so it mutual exclusion means uh, mutual understanding between the processes one if one process is uh, executing in the so the critical the critical section then other process should wait outside that is uh, uh, it assures that uh, mutual exclusion as only one process can access the critical section at a time so next uh, it assures uh, assures progress as no process is blocked due to processes that are outside it assures bound waiting as every process gets the chance so these are the um, three process, three uh, conditions for the uh, um the uh, critical section that will be satisfied with the peterson solution so this is the initial so this you can see this uh, at assume there are number of uh, number of processes each process needs to enter critical section at some point so this is a pseudo code uh, process uh, pi flag i as we discussed flag i and turn so flag i is true while turn equal to, uh, turn and not equal to i and uh, uh, cs is 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 not free. Critical section is not free. Wait. So critical section flag i is called false. Then set it. Turn equal to j. So turn j means it is uh, it's having uh, um, requirement to enter into the critical section. Choose another process to go to critical section. This is a um, condition. So in this uh, flag uh, flag array of size n is added, which by default it it is set to false. whenever a process needs to enter into the critical section it is set to true so the process is ready to enter into execution then by it will go from ready queue to um your uh, running state so that is cpu so it is set to true from the from this example above example if the process py pi needs to enter it will set to flag i equal to true so there is another variable turn whenever process ex existing from the critical section it will change the turn to another number from the list of ready to ready to processes so if it is true then ready and automatically it will um, the flag will be flag is true it means it is ready so that's what critical peterson critical section problem will be solved so what is synchronization hardware so many systems provide hardware support for critical section code so as we know uh, everything will be um, monitored by the os 
So apart from this, that is OS means the software programs are there in the OS. So these programs will monitor the operation of the computer or user deployment. So, so apart from this, uh, we got uh, some uh, hardware support also. So the critical section problem would, could be solved easily in a single processor environment if you could disallow interrupts to occur while a shared variable or resource is being modified. So in this manner, you could be sure that the current sequence of instructions would, would be followed to execute in order without preemption. So unfortunately, the solution is not feasible in multiprocess environment. So disabling interrupt and multiprocess environment can be time consuming as messages passed to all processors. So this is not possible for the multiprocessor system. So synchronization hardware. So there are three hardware uh, approaches to solve the process synchronization problem. And the one is swap, uh, test and set functions, uh, unlock and uh, lock functions. So apart from the hardware of software, we required some hardware support also for synchronization concepts. That is, uh, uh, in test and set hardware variable, shared variable, is a lock that initializes to false. The algorithm returns whether whatever value is sent to the sent to it and sets the lock to true. So mutual exclusion is issued here. So as it as till the lock is set to true. The other process will not able to enter into the loop continuous loop continuous. So, however, after one process is completed, uh, any other process can go as and no, as no queues maintained. So, first testing and setting. So, there are two things. If uh, test and set in the shared variables is a lock is a lock that is initialized to false. So, the algorithm returns whether whatever value is sent to sent to it and uh, sets the lock. True. When it is true, means one process uh, entering into the micro, um, scrum, the critical section. So that is uh, mutual exclusion is ensured here. So for any critical section, this mutual exclusion, bounded weight, um, and these three conditions should be maintained or fulfilled. So what next one is swap? Uh, in this algorithm, instead of directly uh, setting the lock to true, the key is first set to set to true. And then swap with the lock. So similar to test and set, when uh, there are there are no processes in the critical section, the lock turns to false and allows other process to enter. So hence mutual exclusion and progress are ensured, but the bond weight is not ensured. But the very same reason. So here, as we have seen, there are two things: two things, lock and uh, unlock. One once lock is there, means one process is there. And uh, then process will enter into the critical section. Lock is uh, maintained. Lock is maintained there. So till the time it comes out, then other process uh, will wait in the queue. Once the process is coming out from the critical section, then it will be unlocked. Then other process will go. So by watching the unlock, other process will enter. Again, it will lock. So that's what. Uh, in this algorithm, instead of directly setting the lock to true, the key is first set to true and the swap, swap it with the lock. This is a swap technology, swap technique. So unlock and lock. In addition to the test and set, the algorithm uses waiting I and check if there are any process in the wait. The process are set in the ready queue with the, res with the respect to the critical section. So unlike the previous algorithm, it doesn't set the lock to false and checks the ready queue for any waiting process. If there are no wait processes waiting in the ready queue, the lock is then set to false and set false and any process can enter. So here the lock is set to false. So then nobody is in the critical section. So you can enter. So after that one, once it is again, it will be false. Are false to true. So this is a uh, uh, unlock and lock. So so we'll see what is sigma. This is uh, another uh, technique, uh, sigma force. So which maintains um, the critical section problem, which solves this critical section problem. A sigma force is a more generalized form of the lock of a lock that can be used to regulate traffic in a critical section 
are to order code execution. So anything that uh, what are the uh, things we are doing? So all these things are meant uh, to control the critical section. It means it means synchronization of the processes. That one process will enter into the micro shared memory or critical section, and uh, other process will be waiting. So other process when the um, first process completes and comes out soon after, a uh, second process which is in the waiting that will enter into the processor or uh, shared memory. So this is there are two things lock and unlock. Once lock is there means so no other process can enter into the critical section. So till till lock is there. Once lock is unlocked, so it means that the or what are the processes executing the critical section that comes out and it will unlock. So one unlock is there, the other process which are waiting, they can they will watch it and uh, it will enter into the critical section. That's what. So the semaphore is another technique. There were invented by the renowned computer scientist Disgustus in 1965. So a semaphore is a, a semaphore is implemented as an integer variable with atomic increment and decrement operations. So long as the value is not negative, the thread will continue, it will block otherwise. If it is coming to negative value, it will block the computer. So the increment operation is called P or signal, the decrement is called weight or V. So P and V operations are there in the uh, semaphores. So semaphore dot weight. So it decreases the counter by one. If the counter is negative, then puts uh, then it puts the thread in a queue and blocks. So this is weight. So semaphore dot signal. So it increments the counter. Wake up one waiting process. So there are two things: semaphore weight, semaphore signal. When the signal coming, then it wake it wake up the processes which are waiting in the queue. So wake up the wake up signal and uh, sleeping signal. So you will see semaphores. Semaphore are two types. So binary semaphore and uh, counting semaphore. In binary semaphore, a binary semaphore is initialized as free one and can vary from zero to one. There are two integers, integer values zero and one. So the semaphore is essentially uh, the same as lock. Lock. It also guarantees that only one process will be in the critical section at a time. Any time, only one process is allowed in the critical section for execution. It means that so the semaphore will make sure that only one process is allowed or inside the critical section at a time, no two processes. So what is the counting semaphore? The counting semaphores can be considered as a pool of permits. A thread user wait for operation to request permit. If the pool is empty, the thread waits until a permit comes available, becomes available. A thread uses single operation to, uh, to return to permit to the pool. A counting semaphore can take any initial value. So first look at two operations that can be used um, to access the change of value of the semaphore. So in this operation, some point of some point uh, regarding P and V operations. So P operation is also called wait, sleep, or down operation, and V operation is called signal, wake up, or up operation. So in, if you look at this one, uh, P semaphore dot uh, semaphore is while S equal to zero, it means waiting, waiting, and wait until until S is equal to zero. If Decrement operation S is equal to S minus one decrement operation. Note that that uh, that there is semicolon after while the code gets struck. So hence while is while is S is zero. So so V operation this is V operation that is uh, V operation and P operation. Both operations are atomic and the same of S is always initialized to one. Here, attack means that variable on which read modify, which read modify and update happens at the same time, same moment with no uh, preemption. That is, in between read and modify the update, other, other, no other operation is performed. That may be change the variable. So here, 
एक क्रिटिकल सेक्शन इज सराउंडेड बाय बोथ ऑपरेशंस टू इंप्लीमेंट क्रॉस सिंक्रोनाइजेशन सी द बिलो इमेज दे वी कैन अंडरस्टैंड दैट वन सम विल सी दैट वन सो सीमा फोर्स सीमा फॉर इंप्लीमेंटेशन मस्ट गारंटी दैट नो टू प्रोसेस कैन एग्जीक्यूट वेट विद द टू प्रोसेस वेट एंड सिग्नल ऑन द सेम सीमा फोर एट द सेम टाइम दस इंप्लीमेंटेशन बिकम्स अ क्रिटिकल सेक्शन प्रॉब्लम वेयर द वेट एंड वेट एंड सिग्नल आर कोड आर Place in the critical section. Note that applications may spend lots of time in critical sections, and uh, therefore, it, uh, this is not a good solution. With each each semaphore, there is one, uh, there is an associated waiting queue. Each entry in a waiting queue has two data items: value, a type of integer, uh, pointer to next record in the list. Two operations: block and wake up. Place the process. Process invoking the operation on the appropriate waiting queue. So wake up means remove one process in the waiting queue and place in the ready queue for the operation and for entering into the critical section. So here uh, waiting and waking, waking up, waking up and signal. Signal one signal means this signal is going to wake up the process. So it means that the critical section is ready now. so one of the process which is sleeping or waiting so that will be which is having the priority and all so as per the priority that process will be sent to the critical section for the operation so it is a wait and signal two things are there wait means it is a critical section is not free it means that process cannot enter so the process will be sleeping or uh, the sleeping mode so soon after the process is uh, coming out from the critical section the signal will go and wake up the signal. Processes to enter into the critical section. That's what uh, how we can achieve the mutual exclusion from this one and progress and bounded waiting. So this is simple uh, coding implementation of signal, implementation of wait. Signal semaphore and uh, S is called uh, incrementing that uh, signal is going. Okay, then remove the process from P and uh, wake up. Wake up signal. So this is implementation wait. So that semaphore in decrement decrementing the value integer zero. Then process list block if it is minus. So classic problems of this incarnation. We will see um, by using this incarnation this semaphores how we can. Uh, um, there are some classic uh, examples or problems. Some of the classical problems depicting the. Class of process incarnation in system where cooperation process are present. So bounded buffer problem, bounded buffer problem, readers and writers problem, dining philosopher problem. These are the classic uh, problems for the um, semaphores using the semaphores. So this is uh, this is the main three problem occur. The problem is in synchronization. So these are uh, these problems solved by using the semaphore variable. Semaphore variable. and we will see uh, one by one with examples so this is uh, um, reference books what uh, we have taken the material from uh, andrus tenenbaum uh, and uh, dandera operating systems concepts based on based approach so these are the two uh, reference books and we will continue uh, the concept uh, in the next uh, session of this class problems we will discuss these classic problems in the next class all this bounded buffer read and read us and write us problem dynamic class per class we we'll discuss like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates